It's remarkable. I mean, the, the thirst for education, like in the morning, we, we open at 8.30 and at 7 o'clock some of the children will be here playing on the swings just waiting for it to happen. Now I never did that when I was a young lad. I, if it started at 8 I'd be there at 8 but I was never there an hour and a half early and they're, they're, they're that enthusiastic. I think we're different in the way that um, we very clearly see that our purpose is to prepare children for life. No exams. We don't frighten children with exams. Life is the exam. Kajal? Okay. Arrange this one, two, ten. Quickly, stand up and do. I was looking for a systemic way of getting away from the indigenous rural um, attitude to our education which is come in, sit down, shut up, look at the board, take it down, remember it, pass your exams, to get to the other end of that spectrum. Montessori is you have children sitting around little tables playing with things, talking amongst themselves becoming confident. They grow in confidence, they grow in self-esteem, uh, then they become more reliable, more thoughtful. That is preparation for life. The teachers are instructed to read to them and read to them and read to them and talk to them and, and their main purpose is the spoken language and interacting and teaching them by speaking. We do focus on the English because that's what's going to get them the better job. I came to India 27 years ago with a question mark over my head. What can anyone ever do about India's population? Which I do see as a problem, not as an asset. You think globally, act locally. The solution for my village is to make it affluent enough so that they start having small families by choice. Okay. Okay. Once they've got their car and their television, that's it. They're small family people. But to make them affluent, they have to have a way of getting a decent job. And to do that, they need to be educated. So education leads to affluence, leads to steady population. This is village common land. When I proposed to put a primary school in the middle village of the three, um, they said yes, they would welcome that because the girls from Pandala used to find it too far to go to the little village school. And the Little Village School wasn't a very good school, it was a state school, sadly. And we, in return, on the same piece of paper said, in that case, as we build the buildings, we will give them to the village council. We're not property rich, we don't own the property. We are education rich, and that's what we want to be. The teachers are very involved in going around the village. They did a census, would you believe, um, two years ago, in order that we, we know what the economic base of each family is, so we know what, what to charge them. It's, it's almost like a, a social experiment. We don't leave any child behind. And yet some of them only pay 10 rupees a month, and we have to find the money to do it. 
So we are charitable in that we are giving away education. Other private schools only sell education. We're going to grow until we get up to age 16. Our eldest are nine. They, they started with us at six. They, they, they are now the nines. Next year they'll be the tens, then they'll be the elevens, and then they'll be the twelves. They go all the way up to 16. It's, it's been a building site from the word go, I, I fear, but um, that, it's still pretty effective as a school, so that doesn't matter. And here, this is the one we've just done. We had the Shropshire Scouts came over here last summer in July, helped them with the floors, and here they left the insignia of the Scouts, the Fleur de Lis, uh, will be there forever. The fact that they, they came and helped us. We are not trying to make everybody into mathematicians. Those that have maths, we want to take them as far as they can go. Those that are good linguists, we want to take them as far as they can go. But we're not trying to make cricketers into mathematicians. If they're good at cricket, we want them to go as far as they can go in cricket. The music, art and sport are what is, what is, is building their character, giving them that confidence. They like to perform because they're... they're they're self-confident. Yeah. Lovely. The essence of Montessori is activity. If you do it, you understand it and you learn it. If somebody tells you about it, you're likely to forget it. And if you're doing it, you're likely to be enjoying yourself. And if someone's telling you about it, you, may, you might be bored. The children are illiterate children of mainly illiterate parents. They come standing right on the firm ground. They're not halfway up the wall. And therefore, what we need to do is by the time they're six we need to have them fluent in English so that they can get straight into the primary curriculum. They'll only do that if the Montessori can A, build on this self-confidence that they seem to have naturally, but to give them as much fluency as they need to start to go up the ladder. The spoken word is what we have to absolutely focus on. And to do that, we're introducing a lot more story reading, storytelling, and nursery rhyme telling, and repetitions, so they get to know the words. And later they will get to know the meaning of the words, but it's all through the ear. And we've got some smashing teachers, you have to say. When the teachers first came, I thought, heavens, how do I assess these people? Now, I know when they come through the door whether I want them. If they smile, they've got good body language, and they've got character. Because these children, what they need is character. Honesty, reliability, sense of justice, sense of team spirit, and all of that the rulers of the world were made on the playing fields at Eton. They weren't in the classroom, out there, having a game of cricket, competing, wanting to win, but to do it honourably. That is the ethos of the playing fields of Eton, and that's what we want here. When I bring visitors to the school, I like to suggest at this stage that what is perhaps the most important sentence in the English language was written not by an Englishman, but by Mahatma Gandhi. In England, we think of a village as being somewhere with a pub and a church. And in India, one thinks of a village as being somewhere with a temple and a tank. And for us to have got the school right next to the tank, here we have a very strong conjunction of the temple, the tank, and the school. I think that's magic. <laughs>